Now from Tehran is Saeed Mohammed Marandi. He is Dean of the Faculty of World Studies at the University of Tehran. Dr. Marandi, welcome to the show. What is the view from Tehran? Does Iran think this framework agreement is a good deal? Well, there are debates going on in Iran, and I think that's a healthy sign that in Iran, uh, different parties, different factions, different groups, and different uh, intellectuals and thinkers have their own views on the issue. I think on the whole, uh, there is a broad support for the negotiating team uh, in Parliament, in the Cabinet, as well as in uh, the Supreme National Security Council. Uh, there are issues with the American interpretation of the fact, the fact sheet that the Americans gave out. Uh, our Foreign Minister, Dr. Zarif, who spent uh, uh, difficult days negotiating with the United States, says that the U.S. fact sheet, sheet is uh, incorrect, it is, um, parts of it are inaccurate, and he said uh, explicitly that parts of it are uh, dishonest. So uh, I think the main problem in the weeks ahead, in the coming three months to be more precise, is whether the United States is willing uh, to come to terms with post-revolutionary Iran, Iran as a sovereign and independent and powerful country, recognize Iran's sovereignty, and uh, if that is the case, then I think we can have a comprehensive deal. But we're still at the initial phases of the process. But uh, for, for the time being, the Iranians are concerned about the very uh, different interpretation that the Americans, or the spin that the Americans are giving to the negotiations so far. Was Dr. Zarif, the Iranian foreign minister, specific about which parts of that fact sheet he found to be incorrect? Well, uh, the, for example, the, he said very specifically that Iran will not accept anything except for the full lifting of sanctions uh, at the very beginning of the agreement, and that um, uh, there must be UN resolution stating, stating that specifically. Uh, he also um, said that uh, the way in which the United States uh, s said that this will come in phases, the, or what they like to call sanctions relief, um, will be provisional. Uh, he, he was very specific and firm and said, no, that they will be terminated for good, uh, both the European sanctions and the American sanctions. Uh, he was also, um, when he spoke about uh, intrusive inspections, I think it was clear from his statements that uh, the interpretation that the U.S. government, the U.S. president, the secretary of state, and the fact sheet were putting forward that somehow the United States uh, or uh, a monitoring body would have access to any place that they like in Iran and which could override Iranian sovereignty simply was an inaccurate, was a, was a completely inaccurate assessment of the negotiations and that uh, Iran's sovereignty would be fully preser preserved. I want to read you something which was in The Economist magazine, uh, The Economist writing about opposition to the deal in Iran, and I'd like to get your view on this. The Economist wrote that there are elements of the powerful Iranian Revolutionary Guard which controls military sites, which the IAEA will have to gain access to, and they may be quite happy to find a way of sabotaging the deal. The Revolutionary Guard may even wish to see sanctions remain in place as they've provided money-making opportunities for many of its leaders. What do you make of that? Well, that's the Financial Times. It's a it's the mainstream economist, Western uh, media outlet, which is very much in line. Sorry, well, okay, The Economist. Does, it really doesn't make much of a difference. But The Economist, The Financial Times, the, whether they're British outlets, American outlets, The New York Times, uh, they will basically say what, uh, what is in line with U.S. government policy when it comes to issues concerning Iran. There's not much difference between uh, Western media outlets, mainstream media outlets. So um, from, I think it's quite clear that uh, the Revolutionary Guards are subordinate uh, to the general Iranian uh, security apparatus. Uh, the decision-making process with regards to the nuclear program is the Supreme National Security Council. And uh, the Revolutionary Guards uh, do not have a stake here. They, uh, their members, like everyone else, wants the removal of sanctions there. In fact, uh, uh, the Western media outlets like to uh, caricature their leaders as somehow being corrupt. But in fact, it's the Revolutionary Guards in Iran that are now 
blocking al-Qaeda in Iraq alongside the Irani, Iraqi people. And, uh, and, and many of them uh, over the last two, three years have been uh, killed or martyred in both Iraq and Syria. So while the Iranians are giving their lives alongside the Syrians and the, uh, and the Iraqis, I think this is a, a silly caricature of um, how the state of affairs is in Iran. So I think it's quite clear that um, the negotiating team has the full support of the leader. The Supreme National Security Council ultimately uh, gives the guidelines to how the negotiating process will move ahead. And uh, the Revolutionary Guards play their role within the framework of the Constitution. The real problem is in the United States, where uh, Republicans have signed a letter basically saying, saying that Iran shouldn't deal, do a deal with the U.S. because the U.S. president has no credibility and has no authority and he'll be out soon. And in the United States, of course, we see that the Israeli regime's prime minister has more support in the political establishment as both Republicans and Democrats enthusiastically welcome, welcomed him when he gave his speech in, in Congress. Uh, he has more support than the U.S. president. So I think the divisions are in the United States and not in Iran. Well, you talk about the opposition in Israel uh, to this framework deal. Let's take a listen to what Benjamin Netanyahu had to say. Israel will not accept an agreement which allows a country that vows to annihilate us to develop nuclear weapons, period. In addition, Israel demands that any final agreement with Iran will include a clear and unambiguous Iranian commitment of Israel's right to exist. So two points there. One is the Israeli Prime Minister saying that Iran wants to develop nuclear weapons. The other is that he wants Iran to recognize uh, Israel's right to exist. Is any of that going to happen? Oh, well, let's say the second part. Is that going to happen, that Iran's going to make a specific statement saying it recognizes Israel's right to exist? Definitely not. Iran sees Israel as an apartheid state. And uh, Iran sees Zionism as a form of racism. And Iran sees Israel exactly uh, in the same light as it saw apartheid South Africa. It is now, uh, Israel is now minority rule, in fact. There are more Palestinians being suppressed and governed by the Israelis through oppression and suppression than there are the Jew Jews in the country. And contrary to what Mr. Obama said just today, that Iran is anti-Semitic somehow, uh, which is, I think, a dishonest statement, obviously. It's definitely a dishonest statement. The Iranians have never been anti-Jewish. In fact, in the Iranian constitution, there must be a Jewish MP in the country. Even if there's one uh, Jew in Iran, that person must become an MP because it's in the Constitution. So it is a, a religion that's recognized, and Judaism, from the Iranian perspective, is not, it has nothing to do with Zionism, the ideology of uh, the, the chosen people and that sort of uh, belief. So Iran will not, definitely not recognize Israel for moral, on moral grounds, and, uh, but I Iran has no intention to build a nuclear weapon. I Iran never had an intention to build a nuclear weapon. There's no evidence whatsoever that Iran ever moved in that direction. Indeed, during the Iran-Iraq war, when the United States and European powers gave Saddam Hussein chemical weapons to use against Iranians, and they helped him use them, the Iranians never produced ne chemical weapons in retaliation, and th therefore they never used chemical weapons. So they never produced them or used them because the religious leaders in Iran and the political establishment believed it to be immoral and uh, unacceptable. So Iran, Iran has a history of having clean hands with, uh, with regards to weapons of mass destruction. Uh, the Israelis have nuclear weapons, and Western countries have aided countries in producing and using uh, weapons of mass destruction. Getting back to the nuts and bolts of this framework agreement itself, what is your understanding of uh, the lifting of sanctions and the timetable for that? Well, I think for the Iranians, there, there are two issues. One is that Iran's nuclear program, ultimately, after a period of time, must be normalized. In other words, the Iranian government will not accept anything less than Iran's full rights within the framework of the NPT and the IAEA. And if, for a pre period of time, Iran gives certain concessions or is flexible, after that period of time, whether it's 10 years or, or whatever, uh, things must go back to normal. That's one issue. The second issue is with regards to sanctions. The, the Iranian position is that if the Iranians are going to be flexible, if they are going to uh, stop the activities of a, a certain number of centrifuges, or if they're going to change 
the design of the Iraq uh, reactor, uh, or, uh, which will take years and will cost a lot of money, then the sanctions must be removed immediately. If, if the Iranians are doing their side of the bargain, there's no reason whatsoever for the Americans to have the right uh, to continue having the sanctions, especially since uh, the, Amer the most important sanctions that have been imposed are by the United States itself, it's, and it's, uh, it deals with third parties. In other words, the, in, in U.S. law, the United States punishes countries that do trade with Iran or who work with the Iranian central bank or Iranian banks. In other words, it's, it's basically violating the sovereignty of China, India, and all other independent countries. So the Iranians are saying that regardless of the fact that most of the sanctions are Ill illegal in the first place, uh, the fact that the Iranians are uh, slowing down the nuclear program and giving concessions means that the United States must immediately, uh, and the P5 plus one, of course, must immediately move to remove the sanctions. There's no reason to keep sanctions when the Iranians are abiding by their side of the agreement.